أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مدل له وما يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واهل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا لا علم لنا إلا ما ألمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم فقال تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا. Our praise for Allah subhanahu wa taala. We glorify Him, and I testify that there is none worthy of worship but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is a servant and final messenger. I invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and upon all believers until yawm al-qiyamah. On this blessed day, yawm al-jum'ah, I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins, increase us in iman, and make us from the people of Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who have passed before us that Allah forgive them, give them light in their graves, make their grave spacious, make their grave a garden from the garden of paradise, and to accept them into Jannatul Firdaus al-Ala. And on this blessed day, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our parents, that he have mercy upon them. I pray for those who have passed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless them, give them light in their grave, make their grave spacious. Let it be a garden of paradise, from the garden of paradise. And we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless all the parents who are alive with his mercy and his blessings. And on this blessed day, we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our children so that they may be good Muslims, that they may be protected from the evil of shaitan, and that they will be the torchbearers of this great deen of Al-Islam. May Allah make them successful in their lives, in this life, make them successful in their studies, and to make them successful and to be good Muslims, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran reminds us in Surah Baqarah, the, the, the ayah right after Surah, uh, after the Ayatul Kursi, Ayah 256, Allah says, La ikraha fi deen. Qattabayana rushdu min al ghayy wa yuk min billahi faqalith tam saka bil urwatil wuthqa. La fisu al malaha wallahu samiun alim. In this ayah, Allah reminds us clearly that we should not, there is no compulsion in religion, there is no compulsion in the faith. And that's a different topic by itself. 
I'm sure someone will discuss that with you sometime. But in, the, in, in this ayah, it's clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, is warning us. And, you know, and the, the beauty of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not only say there is no compulsion in religion and left it like that. The psychology behind the statement, he continues in the ayah. And he says, there is no compulsion in religion. The correct way is distinct from the erroneous way. The, the, the right is distinct from, the, from, the, from the, that which is wrong. And this is a, the beauty, as like I said, of the Quran. The psychology, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not leaving us alone just to think for ourselves. He's given us the answers. So he said, you know, if I'm dealing with my child, tell the child, explain to the child what is Islam. What's the reason for praying? You're talking to someone who's not a Muslim, you don't say, you're going to hellfire, you better be a Muslim. You know, or, you know, being some kind of rude, sarcastic way in trying to get this person to understand what is Islam. We talk to people, we explain to people, we try to, because I'm convinced, I want you to be convinced. And if I want to tell you to do something that is right, or to do something, and I come to you in a rude way, or in a haughty way, in arrogance, then you will not listen to me. So that's one of the reasons behind this, this opening statement of the ayah. To be nice, to be good to watch your words that you speak in the opening in the khutbah we say ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqul ya ayyuhal nas taqu rabbakum alladhi Allah forgive me but we are saying be careful of what you say Allah reminds us believers be careful of what you say how you say it and this ayah reminds us of that and Allah says that why you don't compel people to do things because the right is there, and we can all see it. What is wrong is there. The habits that are not good. The languages that are not good. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that because of the clearness, the distinctiveness of, of the right and the wrong, then do not compel people. Let them figure for themselves. Talk to them. So Allah says, Now whoever rejects the truth, or the tagut, whoever rejects the, the, the evil thing, those who reject and then they believe, they reject the, the evil, they reject that which is wrong, and they make efforts to do that which is right, and then believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they would have a firm grip. They would have a firm grasp, on the strongest ring that never breaks. Because you believe, because you understand Islam, because you are, you are one who follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now, and you reject the evil things. Stay away from it. Stay away from the lying and the cheating and the backbiting. We stay away from, from things that are, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not, is not pleased with and we establish the good habits. We establish the, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then such a person, Allah says, would hold on. He will be urwatul wuspa. This person would hold on to something that is very strong. That you have no, no regrets. That there will always be peace at heart, in your heart. There will always be tranquility and comfort because you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in, in part of the ayah in Surah Ali Imran. Allah says when you make a decision, you make this decision, I want to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to be a good believer or in anything. Although the ayah refers to something else. But generally, you make a decision in your life to do something that is good. When you make that decision, then Allah says, Allah. Put your trust in Allah. 
You are believers. Yes, we have to protect ourselves. We have to close the door. But always remember, that's not the thing that protects us. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our protector. In Allah, yuhibbul mutawakkilin. And verily, Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. It's a quality we have to start developing. Always put our trust in Allah. Our first reaction to anything, Oh Allah, help me. Oh Allah, protect me. Oh Allah, guide me. That's our life. That should be our life. And it's not, it's not difficult to do. Some people, oh, he, you know, we're just saying those things that you could spend 24 hours with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not difficult. We have to start practicing, doing dhikrullah constantly, remembering Allah. And your heart become, you know, it's now conditioned to, to, to if you're not consciously doing it, but because it's your habit, your heart begins to, to, to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you speak, you, just automatically you speak the, the good things, the things that people are pleased with. When you're, when you're giving charity, you do it in the best of, of, of manner. With, you, know, you, you choose the things that will benefit the person who you're helping. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you. So Allah says you will hold on. To this, to this strong grasp, and it would never break from you. You know, sometimes you're standing in the train and there is something that you can hold on, and if the train makes a big you know, stop, then you fall right off. It's something similar. Allah says you can hold on to this, to this ring, grasp on it, and you would it would never break, it would never fail you because you're trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not the ring itself, but it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is always there for us. Yusuf alayhi salam, he turned to Allah when he was in problems. Ayub alayhi salam turned to Allah when he was sick and, and for many years, 18 years he was sick. Everyone left him except his wife. He had everything, but he never lost hope in Allah. He put his trust in Allah. And these are not just fairy tale stories in the Quran. They are actual there are actual things that happen to people. And we have to start looking at those examples. And Allah says, you would hold on to this God. It would never break on you. And Allah is all hearing, all knowing. You know, I wanted to mention a hadith, a story of someone which is not related to this ayah, but it has the same story. You know, there was this person, uh, Abdullah bin Salam. He was a chief rabbi in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was a chief rabbi, but on hearing Islam, and the Prophet wasallam called Islam, he accepted Islam. He became one of the best companions of the Prophet wasallam, And he was a chief rabbi, but good words get to his ears and he became a Muslim. So you know, one day he was praying in the masjid. He was praying and this strange person came in to the masjid and walk up, but there were some other companions standing beside him, looking at him, and they were talking about him. What a good man. What a man is this, a man of paradise. This is very, you know, they were saying good things about this person. So the stranger that came in, he stopped, he waited until he finished praying, and then he went up to him and he said, I heard those people saying about you, you're a good man, you're a good person, you're such, a, such and such. And he got very angry. He said, why are they talking about me? They don't know about, they don't know me. So it tells us something which is not the topic of today that even if it's good things, we don't talk about people behind their backs, even if it's good. Because if you know the person would not like it. In this case, it was good, but he was upset. He said, they don't know me. Why are they talking about me? So then the man said, then Abdullah bin Salam said to, to this man, he said, maybe what happened is that I had this dream one time. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged people at that time. When you have good dreams, bring it to the, to the Fajr and then tell it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then he would explain it. But if you have a bad dream and so a lesson for us, keep that dream to yourself. Don't, don't mention it to someone. If it's a very bad dream, keep it to yourself. If it's a good dream, share it with people. So he said, I had this dream and I 
saw myself in this beautiful garden. I, I'm in this beautiful garden. And in the center of the garden is this tall pole, very tall. And on top of this pole is this handrail, this hand, the grasp, the ring. And, it, and someone is telling him to climb this pole to get to the top. He said, I can't. But suddenly he said, he dreamt that the angel came from under him, blew at, his, at, the, at the bottom of his feet, and he just went up to the pole and he grabbed on to that. So he said he related that dream to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he explained. He, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that that garden that you dreamt you were in was a rauda, rauda tul jannah, was a garden from paradise. You were in a garden from paradise. And the pole itself, the tall pole, the long pole, is your Islam. You know, the principles, the practice, you know, the things that, the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that you are engaged in. This is, this is your Islam, this pole. And the handhold is the Urwatul Wuspa. The Urwatul Wuspa that's mentioned in this ayah. And again, I said, it's not related, but it's a dream that kind of fit into this ayah. He said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that handhold is what you would, that you grasp, means that you held on to your faith. You held on to what Allah commands you to do. And you will be successful. So, you know, they heard this dream, it will explain. So these people were, you know, they were amazed with what he dreamt and how good is this dream. So we always have to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our protector. Allah is our supporter. Allahu waliyul lazina fi dunya wal akhira. Allah is my, is my supporter in this life and the life hereafter. Always have that in mind. And then Allah, you know, this dream, remind, remind ourselves of this dream of this man, this righteous man. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to guide us and make us from the believers, the good believers, inshallah. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, something I want to, to mention or to, to, to share with you today, how many people think they are happy? How many of us sitting here think we are happy? Everyone. Of course, there's, there's things in life that does not, you know, be not too good to us. But there, generally, we are happy. We have clothing. The Prophet Sallallahu says, if you wake up in the morning and you have your family, you have a roof over your head, you have your food, your breakfast, then you are in the best shape. So we should be happy. But the Prophet Sallallahu in this hadith, he gave us four things, four components of happiness. Number one, a good spouse. Brothers, you're good husbands, right? right? A good spouse, a good wife, a good husband. The first thing. Secondly, let me mention them, then I'll get to them. Number two, a good neighbor. Jahir al-Saleh, a good neighbor. And, and you will hear some story of neighbors. So the second thing, if you have a good spouse, a good neighbor, Number, number three, a spacious place to live. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best our condition. At all times, contentment. You may have a small place. It may be tight. My family is large. But that's what the bounty Allah has blessed me with. So if I'm contented, then it becomes spacious. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, a spacious place to live. And fourthly, he mentioned happiness. One, the other component of happiness is to have a good ride. A good ride. Can you imagine you, it's 10 to 1, you have to come to Salatul Jummah, and every week it happens to you, you turn the car, and it's not started. You know, or the battery run down, or, or you can't, the person who's supposed to pick you up didn't pick you up. Or, you know, there's always a problem. You're taking your, your family out, and the car stop, stop driving. You will be so frustrated. You cannot be happy. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned these four things. And, and guess what? And I know you, you, you can recognize this. 
out of these four things that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned as happiness, he had only one of them. He only had a good spouse. He was not, his neighbors we all know, used to throw garbage at him every day. And when she's sick, he looked for her. He never had a good, you know, I, I, I have someone I know personally, uh, his neighbor, nothing he does to her. This is right here in our community. And this, this, this neighbor would call the police. They call ACS on him that he, he's not taking care of his kids. You know, they are people that you know. They call, uh, now they have record that ACS, uh, these, these are the, these are the things that people are facing. Yeah. Um, they have, you know, summertime, everyone has something in their backyard. The neighbor would flood the backyard with, with water. <laughs> these are things, these are, you know, if you don't have, the, how happy can that person be? Always in danger because of the neighbor. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he went to Taif and he was pelted and, and, and cursed and, and you know, all the things happened that he bled until his, his, the, his shoe couldn't remove from his foot because of the blood drying up on his feet. And that was his neighbor too, right? He, he was at the Kaaba, in the precinct of the Kaaba, praying or, or, or reciting Quran, and the enemies came and threw a, a, the, the ten, intestines of, of, of a camel upon him. Can you imagine that? That's a neighbor. That's the people that he deals with. And the person threw that on him. And then his daughter, Fatima radiallahu anha, came running, trying to see what's happening, to see how she could help him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he was, while this thing was on him, he can't because it's so heavy, you know, he's trying to put his head out and he said to her, don't be worried, Allah is my helper. Don't be worried, Allah is my helper. You know, he's trying to console her and he's in danger because he put his trust in Allah. Just one of these four things he was, he was blessed with. He didn't have a good neighbor. He, you know, he, he, we all know the small place that he was living in. His living quarters was very small. But yet he says we should try to, to improve ourselves, try to do good. You know, Allah is our, is our provider. We, we have contentment and we have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, a good ride. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa always ride the slowest camel. <laughs> he always had the slowest camel. But a, he's saying that a good ride makes, us, makes people happy one of the components of happiness. So these are things that are material that the Prophet Wasallam is telling us to have. But of course, if we don't have that spiritual you know, inside, this Iman is not there. Imam Shafi, uh, he says that, you know, in a dua, he used to make a dua. The meaning being that he said, Oh Allah, you give me Iman and I did not ask for it. So give me Jannah and I'm asking you now for it. It's, in other words, what he's saying to us is that in this, in this dua that he's making is that Allah has chosen us and give us Iman. Now it's our, now it's our turn to give thanks to Allah. To be thankful to him for this Iman. Be grateful to him. To do what he commands us. We have the tool to become happy. You know, that small room that the Prophet Sallallahu was living in. Let me, you know, the happiness, I wanted to very quickly say this. You know, he shows his happiness at the moment he was going to die. That day he was going to die. He was in this room, you know, we all know the story, he was very sick. And he was sitting in his, lying in his room. But then he draw the blind, that curtain. And he looked out upon his, upon the companions. Abu Bakr was leading the prayers. You know, so when you know, he looked out and he saw all his companions, all the people who faithfully followed him, and he was smiling and laughing, and the, of course, if the Prophet is in front of you, the Sahabas couldn't pray anymore. They're all happy, they're looking at him, thinking he's coming back out. You know, but the Prophet was looking out upon his happiness. 
This is what he struggled for. This is what he struggled at, at, at Taif for. This is the, 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 all, the, all the things that happened to him. He saw it in front of him. All the believers praying. He worked hard for that. On Yom al Qiyamah, we will see our deeds right in front of us. And, that's, and if it's good deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us smile. We will be happy. So we have to start, make sure our deeds are what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we look upon it on Yom al Qiyamah, then we will be happy. And of course, that will mean the Jannah al Firdaus, inshallah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was looking at them and he was happy. And that's happiness. We all want to be happy and I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless us uh, and make us from the people of paradise, inshallah. And before I close this first uh, part, I want to, before I, I may not have the time on the second one, but quickly, you know, we all know the story of um, uh, Zain al Abidin, you know, very righteous person. Very rich man, had beautiful wife. But when he became the, the, the Khalifa of the Muslims, he gave everything up. Because for him, the happiness was to do what Allah commanded him to do, to be the, right, the best Khalifa. In short time, maybe a well, few years, the success of his community could be shown because of his leadership. And you know what happened? His wife. It's a story that his wife would always be worried when she see him reciting Quran. You would be happy if you see your husband or your wife or your child reciting Quran. But she would always be, you know, so worried that she would become a widow. You know, she would always worry to see him reciting Quran. Why? Because this ayah of Surah Shura, in Surah, Surah Shura, ayah 7, the last, the last part of the, of the ayah, Allah says, Fariqun, and every time he would reach that, that part of that ayah, one group of people would be in paradise and one group of people of, of the hellfire. And he would cry because he would think that he, is from, he would be from these people of hellfire. And this was the most righteous man. And he was worried about where would he end up when he read this ayah or this part of this ayah. Fariqun fil Jannah or Fariqun fil Sa'il. The people of paradise and the, and the group of, 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 of Jahannam. May Allah save us from that group and make us the people of Fariqun fil Jannah and the people of paradise, the group that would enter paradise. You know, let's, I mean, these are stories we need to expand on, but in the Qutbah we can't do that. But I'm hoping, inshallah, that we can all go and research them. And, and recite Quran more. Go look at the meaning of Quran and let it be part of your life. Don't just do it Ramadan. Just, just do it when there's a program or when there's Eid day. You know, get into the habit of reciting Quran every day, even if it's a few ayahs. Every day, recite Quran. Whatever you know, recite it. Small, if, if it's two ayahs, you recite Quran and Allah would make, you will see the difference in your life. Zainal Abidin, he never used to pray to tah Hajjud, you know, many rakats. He just used to do two rakats every night, it was reported. Just two rakats. And he was a Khalifa. So any little thing that brings us closer to Allah, we should make, take that opportunity and pray that Allah make us hold on, to grasp on to the ring of, 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 of um, surety, of strength. And our iman will be strong. I pray Allah forgive me and forgive you and guide us. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma bad. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama salaita ala ibrahima wa ala ali ibrahima innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima innaka hamidu majid Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taqfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin Rabbi jalli muqlim wa salati wa min dhuriyati Rabbana wa taqabal dua Rabbana qfir li wa li walidayya wa li al-mukminina yawma yakumul hisab 
ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكنا عذاب النار لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكنا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار إبال الله Brothers, before I close, just to remind you that the box is out there. When you leave, do a good deed. You're the only one who supports the masjid. So please donate as, as, as you can, your ability allows you. And know that you're the ones who take care of the masjid. May Allah bless you and bless your wealth and bless your family. Ibadallah, inna Allah ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan wa itai dhil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baq. Ya idhukum la'alakum tadakkalun. Masala. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر